Morning y'all, just literally looking out my window and this guy is just, he seems fine, has fallen off his bike. He's absolutely fine and walking around, just not ex what you expect when you open your window so much. His bike doesn't look so good. He's up and they're helping him. People are good, aren't they? So I'm in New Bedford, um, got in very late last night, literally hit the room at about 4am, it's now 8.30am. We're going to the ball plant, are you coming? Should we go to the Titleist ball plant? Let's see what that's all about. Right, Titleist ball plant number two. We're gonna start at this end and we're gonna follow the balls all the way down to the other end and find out how they get into your golf bag. And are they different to the pros ones, to your ones? What's actually happening in there? So this is the rubber, this is basically where the core starts, is that right? You're making the cores here. Right, the primary ingredient that we use to make cores is a synthetic polybutadiene rubber. Uh, and so we use large volumes of that with really precise measurements combined with some other chemical reactions to achieve the performance specifications we're looking for, core to core to core. Okay, and I mean, I see him cutting little bits off with knives. I mean, he's literally weighing it or trying to get the ingredients like how I would make a cake. Almost. That's exactly like, right. He's weighing the ingredients so that we get very precise amounts of what we need on a very specific recipe around. If we're trying to achieve the Pro V1 core, it has a really precise uh, recipe that we're going to follow to achieve that performance characteristic. So this is basically the mix coming out, is that right? Right, so this is uh, essentially the prep material that will ultimately go into our process and will make into Pro V1 cores. I can tell by the color here of the green that these will be Pro V1 core prep material. Um, and so right now we're taking a sample of it that will go measure its properties, ensure that they are on spec, um, and they will we'll hand these to our associate right here. There you go. Um, and, and we'll register this batch and we'll measure all its properties before moving it on and, and actually manufacturing and turning it into Pro V1 core. So where are we now? So we're in one of our quality labs here at Ball Plant 3. Um, so the material that we just saw come out of the mix mill, we're going to take a sample of that material, bring it down to the quality lab and actually make it into a core prior to doing it at scale. So we can understand its properties, we can check its COR, its compression, its size, its weight, and make sure it's within spec. It allows us to generate a very consistent golf ball at the end of the process. Ball to ball to ball, we get very, very high consistency. And we do that because we embed quality into the process here and not, don't just inspect it into the product at the end. So dual cores, I'm guessing I'm seeing there. You are. So the, the design of the dual core is, a, is allows us to use multiple components to achieve our spin and speed characteristics. Um, one of the challenges of making dual cores is making sure that the center of the golf ball is precisely centered. Even microscopic shifting can create a golf ball that doesn't perform the way we want it to. And it's actually one of the things that when we analyze products out uh, in the competitive world, um, when people don't control their process the way we do, we see that shifting and, and it creates products that just don't perform consistently ball to ball to ball. So this machine that I'm not allowed to film that much of is actually making sure that those scores are going directly in the place you want them to go. Right? Yeah. That they are precisely centered, that we get a, a the center of our dual core is exactly in the middle and doesn't shift at all, creating performance problems. So what do we, this is obviously making it look more like a golf ball now. That's right, so we're gonna now put the cover on the golf ball and these molds themselves are a critically important part of the process that we control. So we manufacture the molds themselves in a facility that we have up the street here. And so we need to manufacture a lot of these in order to make the volume of Pro V1 that we do. And it's a painstaking process to get these as precise as we need them but it allows us to pick, deliver quality control and, and specifically on the flight of the golf ball. Microscopic inconsistencies in the depth of dimples will create golf balls that fly inconsistently, literally 30, 40 yards offline. And so what we do is we manufacture these ourselves through a process and then we literally inspect 
every single nipple and every single mold to ensure that they are the proper depth and meet our standard before we move these into the manufacturing process. And I think it's this part really that, I mean, we don't give any respect to as someone who's just literally putting something out of my bag that I might be swearing at because I've lost one already. You know what I mean? That's right. Like, this, this part is the part that I think, it's just listening to you speak, like the passion that you're talking with is something that we often don't even get close to expecting and what's going into it. I, I, and I think one of the things, again, speaking to what we see when somebody doesn't control their process, is that it's something that a golfer would never attribute yeah. to the golf ball. Yeah. You know, at the time where you stand up there, you hit a shot that you think should go, I hit it perfect, I hit my 150 yard shot, it should fly exactly 150 yards, and it comes up eight yards short. Yeah. And the thing you always see a golfer doing in that situation is thinking about their swing and what they might have done. If you're not controlling your process, aerodynamics could cause something like that to happen, either a golf ball to fly too long, too short, or offline. So this one has basically the two urethane covers being put on around what we saw the core. That's right. And then this one has it with it, you kind of buffeted this off in effect, sanded it off. Right, We you know, what we need to, ensure that this line comes off but that we don't deform or impact any of the dimples because as we talked about that can influence flight and and so we that buffing process needs to be extraordinarily precise to make sure that we take the line off but we don't impact the, the quality of the cover in any way or affect the dimples in any way correct because i made a point where i thought i'm looking at that thinking apart from the branding going on it that's gameable but you're saying there's paint to go on that right there's another clear layer and obviously then the branding to go on as well but if you put the paint on that that's going to affect the deepness of those dimples surely that's right so the the molds themselves are designed with the paint thickness in mind so we will go and our engineers will microscopically measure to ensure that we know we're going to get paint coverage within those dimples that will ultimately optimize our flight to our target because in effect, if I paint that, I'm going to cover and fill one of those deep, you know, dimples in, aren't I? Right. If I get a brush on that, so our the dimples are going to become not as deep. That's right. And our aero, aerodynamics guys spend a lot of time working on our paint process, believe it or not, really to ensure that we get uniform coverage around the ball when we paint it. Which again is something I would never really think right. about without seeing this process. Right. So where are we going now? So we're going into the paint room. And we're gonna put two coats of white paint on the surface of the ball. We'll then print the title of script, the play number, and the side stamp. And then we'll put a clear coat of paint over the top of that. Um, and why Sorry. do I have to look like this? Well, you know, you are, uh, we appreciate you being really protective of all that hair you have. Uh, <laughs> I but probably don't even need you that. probably oh, could get away with it, yes. But we're going to make sure that no forward material uh, it gets stuck to the golf ball. In fact, when we changed our paint system several years ago to provide better durability for the golfer, the paint adheres so well to the golf ball it wants to adhere to everything. So we have to be incredibly well uh, protected yeah. when we walk into this room. I'm pretty well protected, I think, at the minute. What are these? Are these their handicaps? What are the names? Look, <laughs> the handy, you know, like at the golf stuff. Yeah, no, this is this is our our employees who make golf balls here at Ball Plant Three, listed in order of seniority. And so, the the top two names on the list will celebrate 53 years making golf balls for Titleist later this summer. Years. 53 each. years each. Yes. So, um, I mean, you can go all down this entire list in order to get to somebody who's worked for uh, on the floor making golf balls here for less than 20 years, I think you have to get the, all the way to here. So wow, that's almost crazy. halfway down the list. So we saw the last process there, um, which all these people are part of basically, right. aren't they? Um, I saw it being x-rays. So which goes back to what you were telling me when I didn't film it, but on 
when I walked in, the kind of core values is what right. started the Titleist brand, wasn't it? Right. Was that the balls were off center and what have you. Right. So still doing that same process now at the end. We do. We so we 100% X-ray all Pro V1, Pro V1X, and AVX golf balls before they leave this facility um, to ensure that this is a final sanity check, if you will, yeah, to make yeah. sure that everything is where it needs to be. And uh, and it, it just it, it goes back to our roots of, of before it leaves the building, we need to be 100% sure that what we're delivering to the golfer is, is right. Okay, and then I also didn't notice any tour department. I haven't been in many of these facilities where there isn't a in the corner tour. That's a lot of balls. That's a lot. Uh, in a corner tour, tour department where I'm kind of allowed to be shown, but they don't want to talk. Like, right. I didn't see that here. Yeah, we don't. We don't have a specific area where we make golf balls for tour. Uh, our process is the same. Uh, there's no manufacturing difference between a Pro V1 that you'll buy in your golf shop and a Pro V1 that gets played uh, on tour week in and week out. Wow. Well, okay. That's that's impressive, isn't it? There we go guys, that was my visit round the ball plant. As you can tell, I'm not in America anymore. I'm actually in Scotland with these two. Hello! Jokers. Um, my experience at the ball plant, I was quite impressed, really impressed actually, with the kind of tolerances and their kind of attention to detail to try and make that kind of perfect product really. I guess I think the interesting part is well, I don't have the tour department so you're getting what the players play on tour. Post comments down below, let me know what you thought. Um, it was very eye-opening. They're making a lot of balls, they have done for a lot of years and they're very proud of what they do and I kind of had more respect for what they do going round there. Let me know what you think. Comments down below as always. Speak to you soon.